Hi, my name is Dee Cal. I'm going to do a mixed media painting for you now of some pansies. They've just come into flower. And I'm going to work on a wet surface. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a broad uh, flat brush and just wet the surface a little bit. And then using watercolor art bars, a bit of ink tents, I'm wetting it very randomly. So there'll be places where there's little dry patches. And then using a bit of watercolor, I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue and just dilute it down and just drop it in and see what it does here and there. And then picking up a little bit of the crimson, dropping that in. And then here's the exciting medium that I love working with. I'm going to work with both art bars and ink tents. And using the grate and shake, I'm going to this time hold the grater above the wet surface and just grate it in so that you get little granules of paint landing on the wet surface here and there. That was a sort of lilac colour. I'm now going to take up a little dark blue and just put that in as well. Those were art bars. I'm now going to move across and pick up a little um, ink tents and put some of that in here and there. And then while it's nice and wet, it's going to dissolve into the water and I'm going to take a painting knife and just pull the colour around. Maybe wet it a little bit more in places. Just get the whole thing to run. And it should give me some lovely, exciting paint to work back into. I don't want to lose the texture that I'm creating. So I keep wiping my painting knife and just really flatten the colour a little bit and try and create little petal-like shapes. Here and there, I'm just flattening the colour into the water and pulling it across. You've got to work fairly quickly because the paint is obviously drying. Dry your brush. You need to pick up that flat brush as well and just uh, soften the paint here and there. And I like using either cold colours or warm colours. I really don't have too great a success in mixing yellows in with the reds and the blues. So I keep to cool colours or warm colours. Just catch the drip here and there and try and create some interesting half petal shapes where the flowers turned away, especially around the edges. I'm going to leave this lower part of the painting quite dry and put all the greenery into there. So some green leaves and things. I'm just scratching back to the white and then I'll use a hairdryer on it and just get it to uh, dry off. So it's dried off completely now and I'm going to go in and look at the negative space and I quite often pick one of the flowers that I'm painting and just count how many petals they are, one, two, three, four, five. And it quite often helps just to have it lying on your painting so that you can refer to it. Using a water-soluble um, pencil and just finding the centres, I've first got to decide how big I'm going to uh, paint these flowers and... Um, I just love the texture that all this multimedia gives you. So the little dots in the center are going to be the center of the flowers. I can always put the yellow back in later. And what I would do there is use a little bit of um, white ink and uh, block out any dark colors uh, and then paint the yellow on top of it. So you never worry about, oh, the center of my flower is actually yellow and I've got pinks and blues around it because of course it's mixed media, so it's very forgiving and uh, you can be very free and expressive with it. So once again, I'm just using a pencil to find the odd little shape, beautiful leaf-like shape just there. So I'll try and capture that and bring it out like that. So just making them nice and big in the front like that and then looking for a few little spaces here and there. If you don't have a water-soluble uh, pencil, of course you can make your own ink by just grating it into the Grayton's uh, uh, shake and then use that to pull out the details like this. I quite like to outline and then use a damp brush once again just to pull those edges so that you get the variety of tones. So with the dipping pen going in and pulling out a few little frilly details like that and then work into those details. Of course you can just use your paintbrush as well and pick up the colour that's already on the paper from all the texture that you've created. And you've just got to take your time and really spend time looking to see what you've got. So it's a combination of uh, painting and drawing, creating a lot of texture. You can also just zip directly into here. I've just blotched over there, but that's fine because I can pick it up and take it right back into the painting. And so 
a very free and easy way of painting. And I've got my flower right here on my painting to help me, sometimes turning it sideways so I get a bit of a side view. The plan is at the bottom to bring a whole lot of um, green leaves and uh, the basis of the flower. I'm not going to pull out every single petal that I see because I want to engage the viewer. I want them to look at it and say, oh, I wonder if that's a petal there, or I wonder why she left it. I quite like standing close to my paintings when they are on exhibition and listen to what people say. It can be very funny. And quite often they do ask why I've left things unpainted. And so it's, it's nice to engage them, to get them involved with the painting. Picking up a little blue. And so with the negative space, I quite like to use two brushes. One brush has got the color that I'm outlining with and the other brush is just pulling it away and softening it off and just hinting that there's a, a bit of a flower peeking out from all this massive frothy color that's on your page. There's a lovely shape there that I can go into. Maybe a smidgen more color on it and here as well. And it's just hinting at the, uh, the flowers. Here's that one that I drew right up close. And I might just be quite bold and go in and outline all the way around it. Drop color in so that you get a variation of tone as well. And if when the painting is totally dry, I want to put some of this very stripy detail into it, I can always go back in and put that in as well. It's quite important to make your, um, your edges interesting to look at. So there's a lovely little dot there and then I'm going to soften it off. There's a lovely little shape just there and um, I'm not outlining the entire petal, just a little hint here and there. So I'm just going to mix a bit of a dark purpley colour and um, maybe this one. So I'm going to outline and pull. And then I think I'm going to use a knife to scratch into it and just pull it like that, just to create a bit of texture. Quite like that, so I might do it again there. And a little here and there is enough. You don't want to uh, put this on every single one of them. But just here and there, a little of that will do nicely. I'm going to now pick up my greens. And I'm going to draw in some of the greenery. So once again, the poor unfortunate plant is going to have a little bit of him snipped off. Simply so that I can get the shape of the leaves. And I'm going to, I'm using a water soluble uh, pencil. I just judge how big or how small I want it to be. And I'm going into those outside edges. I'm just going to put a great big, almost nest of greenery around the base of it. Put the odd little bud coming out here and there as well, just to give a bit of interest. And that is water soluble paint. So if I don't like it, if I've made a mistake, it's quite easy to just lift it out. But at that stage, I think it's fine. I'm now going to pick up my uh, brush and dilute a little bit of yellow and make it green. And so yellow and blue mixed together. Going to just take a bit of a wash into the uh, into the drawn area, uh, like this. So keeping keeping with the technique of painting, the whole uh, painting technique has been very wet and wet into wet and loose. And I can't suddenly tighten up the painting. And I might also just pick up some paint directly from either the ink tents blocks or uh, the art bars, whatever you're using, and just introduce some of that colour into it as well dropping it in, allowing the paint to run, cutting back into the shape above it, maybe using the knife just to scratch that paint around. Give me some interesting textures. I've just been very experimental with it. It's always working wet, using the, uh, the whole technique that you've worked the whole painting with. Just going to go back out here, do a little bit of that. Take my knife and just scratch it in. 
that has to dry. And once it's dry, I can judge the turns and have a look at it. Uh, so I'm just going to use the hair dryer on it for a few moments. The painting is now dry, and when I look at it, it needs a little definition here and there. So I'm going to use the uh, dark crimson art bar, uh, which has got a lovely velvety um, purple to it. And uh, I'm just going to go back in and pull out a few little shapes here and there, especially as the character of these flowers is very much one where they have these funny little dark patches on them. So here and there just putting in a little bit more definition. Just using uh, two brushes. One brush has actually got the paint on and uh, just putting these great big dark blots of color on just to show that they are pansies. And I'm pulling those edges away uh, just like that, just here and there. And that should be about right. I'll, I've put out some ink. You can also dissolve the uh, art bar, you can also dissolve the ink tense blocks to give you very, very opaque colour if you need it. And it's wonderful the way you can just go in and just a few drops of uh, the white will block out whatever you want. And that's going to have yellow put on top of it, just here and there, a little flash of yellow to just lift the painting a little bit. That's got to dry, so I'm going to use the hairdryer on it. And uh, as soon as it's dry, I'll put the uh, little hints of yellow on as well. So it's dried off completely now, and I'm going to go in and take a little yellow watercolour and just go in on, on top. And you really do get a very sharp yellow contrast, which is what the flower has got. If you have a look here, it's got this lovely yellow contrast. The last thing I might do is um, put a few little lines on the painting here and there, especially on the one or two that are really in focus, just like that, just to finish it off. So I hope you have a go at mixed media. It's terrific to work with.